Welcome to Forester's Creative. Today I'll be showing you how to create an acrylic pour. First, you'll need latex gloves. Several pairs, actually. They aren't required, but if you enjoy not having paint embedded in your cuticles and under your fingernails, I highly suggest them. You'll also need a canvas, but we're going to set that aside. We'll get to it later. First, we'll need to mix our paint. Start with a few plastic cups and three to five paint colors. In this case, we're using three colors as well as black and white. If you're interested in a dirty cup pour, set an extra cup aside. I'll demo the dirty cup pour concept later in this video. For a canvas of this size, you're going to need about two tablespoons of each color in their own cup. For black and white, do four tablespoons each. Okay, now that we have our paint colors, it's time to add a pouring medium. In this case, we're using a latex paint additive that causes paint to be less viscous and gives it a longer dry time. A common brand is Floetrol. You can also use Mod Podge, Liquitex pouring medium, water, or a mix of these. Since different acrylic paint brands have different viscosities, there is no specific amount of medium. You'll have to eyeball it. Make sure to use a different stir stick for each color. Using tongue depressors is helpful when checking for viscosity. In our case, we're looking for a thickness somewhere between simple syrup and water. As you can see, it takes a lot of mixing to get the paint and medium truly blended. You don't want to skimp out on the mixing. If your paint is still lumpy, it will show in the canvas later on. As you stir, you'll find your mixture is either too thick or too thin. It's okay to add more pouring medium or more paint at this point in the process. As you complete more acrylic pours and get used to the brand of paint that you prefer, you'll get accustomed to the exact mixtures for your pours. All right, we've got our paints mixed. Let's cut to the next step. You're going to want to elevate your canvas. We use small red solo cups for this purpose. Okay, well, these are glued together, so we'll set them aside. You want to prepare your pour in a big tray or over a surface you don't care much about. This is a very messy art project. Make sure you line up the support cups so they aren't poking out from under the edges of the canvas. You want the canvas to allow paint to flow over the edge without sticking to the cups. Before you pour any paints, be sure to add a liquid silicone to each paint. In this case, we're using a treadmill lubricant. Add 8 to 10 drops to each paint. As you stir, if you want bigger cells, stir less. If you want tiny cells, give it a good stir of about two minutes. Since this pour, like all acrylic pours, is an experiment, I'm going to pour white onto the canvas first, and then add the rest in what's called a dirty cup pour. A dirty cup pour generally is where you put all your mixed paints into a single cup before pouring. In this case, we're adding black first, then green, light blue, and purple. We'll give it one stir once all the colors are added and then dump it on the canvas. Now that all of your paint has been poured, pick your canvas up and start letting the paint flow around. As you can see, without further intervention, many cells have already started to appear. Continue to tilt your canvas to spread the paint out. Allow it to flow over the corners, edges, everywhere. Sometimes paint won't cover certain parts of the canvas. It's just stubborn. Use any paint that has dripped off the sides to fill the corners and empty spots. At this point, I'm sure you're saying, Oh no, she's ruined it! But never fear, I have a plan, and it involves more paint, and more importantly, fire.
For this part of the process, you'll need a butane torch. Ours has had some issues. We don't always take our gloves off before using it. It needs a little extra help from a normal lighter. As you glide the flame across your canvas, cells will begin to appear. Make sure you don't leave the flame on any specific spot for too long. Your paint will actually start on fire. It's not a good look. The importance of the silicone in making cells is very clear in this example. You notice on the larger spots of blue and green that came from the bottom of their cups and didn't have silicone mixed with them, there aren't any cells forming. But in the darker green and purple spots, which were in the original dirty cup pour, cells are blooming. Before I continue, I'm going to place an extra support in the middle. If, like me, you're using a cheaper canvas, it might not be tight enough on its frame. This is a lot of paint to dry, and you don't want it to pull in the center. Now we'll tilt the canvas around one more time to spread out some of those cells and get it just right. We'll fire it one more time and then use a heat gun to speed up the drying process as well as gently push some of the paint around. And that's it. Give your canvas about 48 hours to completely dry before hanging it up. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to see more content from Forrester's Creative.